This is an Habao Hyper MT Plus 2. This is the Habao Hyper SSTE. And today we get to check out the newest Habao, the Hyper VS2. All right, there it is, the Habao Hyper VS2. Now, unfortunately, I cannot show you guys the body because my buddy who paints my bodies just picked up that one and the clear one for the Kronos XTR. So those are gonna get painted. But what we can do is I'm gonna get all the electronics into the buggy. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm running, get everything in, get everything installed. And probably guys just do sort of a, I'll do like a brief test to make sure everything's working, test the servo, all that kind of stuff. I've already got the motor mount mounted up to the motor. I've got the pinion installed, loctited everything. Everything's good to go that way. But what I want to do right now is this, and I'm going to admit a mistake that I've now done twice with the Hobbywing Max 8. When you buy a brand new Max 8, it comes with twin XT90s. Now, I always run a single IC5 because I have a big 6S pack. I have 4S packs, and that's all I run. So, and again, guys, I've done this now twice. So do yourselves a favor. When you get this ESC out of the box, there's a little bag in there. It's got stickers. It's got the extra fan, but it also has that cap pack in there. I mean it. Do yourself a favor. Take that cap pack out and set it right beside wherever you're going to do your soldering. Because I have, like I mentioned, guys, done this twice now. I've removed the XT90s, soldered up the single IC5, even clicked in the little cover for the wires where the connectors are and then gone back and realized that the cap pack is still sitting in the box. And yeah, I've done that twice. You would have thought I would have learned the first time. Nope, I did it a second time. So what we're gonna do now is this. I'm gonna get the electronics installed in the buggy just so that you guys can see it. You guys can see it with all the electronics. You can see it with the servo. And then we're gonna go guys over what this buggy is, talk about some of the materials and all that fun stuff. All right guys, so I usually will take kind of a pause while I'm putting the buggy together if I come across something that I wanna share with you guys. And as you can see, I've got the servo installed. So everything's good to go. I pulled off one of the side guards to get it in, got all the screws in, got the arm attached. And I thought I would just show you guys this. If you're looking for a servo that needs a very long wire, this Savox, it's the 1211, um, what is it? SW1211SG. Here are the specs of it. So you can see 347 ounces of torque. And it's got really, really good speed in it as well. But it's got a really long wire so if you had to route this you know let's say if you had a crawler and you know you got this mounted up let's say at the front axle and a rear axle or something like that you definitely have a lot of cable here all right so i've got everything done and the buggy is sitting on a set of paddles definitely something i have not had before i've never had a buggy with paddles i've ran a lot of different aftermarket tires uh you know heavy aggressive tires stuff like that i've never had a 1 8 scale buggy on paddles before so this should be extremely interesting all right, the best way to explain the Habao Hyper VS2 is that it's basically an entry-level race buggy, meaning it's higher end than a lot of the basher buggies out there. It basically retains the light weight that you want for a race buggy, but then has reinforcement where you need it. So 7075 shock towers, 7075 steering, uh, like the Ackerman plate, for example. You have a three millimeter chassis, you have 17 millimeter big bore shocks with four millimeter shafts. Uh, I think I mentioned already the 7075 shock towers. Those are four millimeters thick also. So basically you have a lot of those beefed up components where it needs to be, yet keep things like the uh, chassis braces, for example, are still, you know, a composite plastic. Keep them light, a little bit flexible and all that kind of fun stuff. I have owned, as I showed guys at the beginning of the video, a few Habaos. I still have my Hyper MT Plus 2 and I have my SSTE. And they have been amazing rigs. The MT actually has the upgraded diff gears in it, yet my SSTE still is running the stock ones and I've never had a problem with that one. So, you know what? I won't be changing any of the gears in this. I'll probably pull the diffs, I'll check the fluids, probably thicken them up for my kind of driving and all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, guys, everything on this buggy feels great. 
Now, everything went in the buggy fine. Motor, ESC, all that kind of stuff. No issues at all. I'll put a couple of pictures right now up on the screen. You can see how I mounted the ESC. So I'd mentioned earlier that basically because that Max 8 has those screw holes underneath, I drilled a few holes in the stock ESC plate and still used Velcro, but was able to bring the screws up, really, really hold this ESC in place. I still have the Velcro. I still have, you know, kind of a bit of a cushion there between the two layers of Velcro, but I also have it screwed in. So that's a good thing. I think that's a huge plus. I'm not going to find my ESC hanging around or hanging off at any point. Servo, again, went in fine. Lots of cable. So I think I showed you guys that in the beginning. The wire that leads from the servo is huge. Same actually goes for the Max 8. So there's quite a bit of mess in here that I am deliberately not showing you guys because it looks horrible. But the one issue I had, and I'm going to try to bring you guys in closer so that you guys can see. If you can see right down in here, where the cable comes out of the servo is right close to that center diff, right close to the outdrive. Um, so that was a crappy, crappy thing to work on. You can sort of see how I've got like that carbon fiber tape underneath because that was my way to try to hold down the wires so that they wouldn't get close to the outdrive and also wouldn't get close to the pinion or the spur. That was the other problem I had when I brought the servo, um, or the servo, the antenna out. At one point, it was kind of close to the pinion, so I had to kind of move all that around. So that was a bit of not fun. Um, obviously, if the wire had let's have been coming out this end, it wouldn't have been as big of a deal. I could have routed it a little bit different. But either way, that actually is what took the most work. ESC, doing the drilling, not a big deal. Motor, not a big deal. It was just actually trying to get this these wires down here so that they weren't going to get, again, into the spur, into the pinion, uh, or close to the outdrive. All right, so I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I'm running a Hobbywing 2200 kV motor. And I've got it, guys, using the included 16-tooth pinion. I have it mounted this way, so it's kind of a bit on an angle, uh, instead of just being straight up and down, because of the fact that when it was sitting straight up and down, I found the cables just really were kind of high and kind of bunched over. I didn't really like the look of it. I realized I could resolder the bullets, but I'll be honest, I am pretty good at soldering, but I don't enjoy it. And if I can usually avoid it, I will. So by putting the motor this way, you know, you kind of basically bring the wires this way some more. It kind of makes them look a little bit cleaner. doesn't make it look as high. As well as guys, if at some point, hey, this system decides to go in something else, I'll still have the uh, extra wire there that I need. One thing I really like about the Hobby Wing combo is the size of the Max 8. I know that it seems like a lot of people now are going with big ESCs and big motors, big pinions, in a sense, big power. And heck, I've done that, guys. But honestly, I've been noticing lately as I've been using the Max 8 combos and the Castle combo I have as well, that these work really really well in eight scale and even seven scale vehicles the 2200 kv gives you a lot of rpms so you can stay with you know a slightly smaller smaller pinion so you don't have to worry about size and all that kind of issue and you, you're not driving around a tank i always you know the one thing i as much as i love my creighton exb running that max 6 and that 1730 kv it does feel heavier and that's one of the things i've really noticed from driving let's say something like my chronos xdr to my crate and EXB is that even though the EXB is super powerful, don't get me wrong, I'm not putting that truck down, it's a wicked truck, it just feels heavier. This buggy feels great right now. When you pick it up, it, it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like a tank. And I've seen where a lot of people run the bigger ESCs, they want to run a Max 6, they, they want to run a 1650 KV. And you know what? I, I think that, guys, is complete overkill for something like this. Uh, the 2200 on 4S is still gonna give you a lot of RPMs, yet I do have guys, and I've shown this in other videos before, this smaller 6S pack that is 4,000 milliamps, but it is 95C. So this will also guys go in the buggy. So I'll be running this in my red line packs. This thing should be insane. And I'm excited guys to get it out and to see what it's gonna be like with these paddles, because like I mentioned guys, I have never ran any buggy with a set of paddles. All right, so there will be a part two to this buggy kind of unboxing sort of first impressions video. Because I don't have the body right now, I actually can't show you guys what it's going to look like finished. I don't know how long it's going to take, and I didn't really want to sit around for a week or two weeks just in case that's how long it takes and not get this up. I know a lot of people were interested in this buggy and wanted to see how it was going to look and see how everything was going to turn out. And so far, guys, I am very impressed. Everything is very beefy. Turnbuckles, the arms, 
everything. You can see it's definitely heavy duty. The rod ends in here are just massive. I always like when you've got, you know, basically you've got your actual turnbuckle and you've got most of it sitting in rod end as well. So instead of kind of an overhang or smaller, you know, shorter rod ends, I always like when the rod ends are huge. I just find it makes it that much more stronger and it'll just be that much more uh, kind of reinforcement there. So it'll just be a tougher setup overall. But yeah, I'm really guys excited to get this thing out. I'm excited to see what the paddles are like. I've already mentioned I'll probably be running the Jetco uh, King Cobras. I think I've already showed them in the video, but these guys right here, boo. I'll be running these ones. And yeah, I'm. we'll, we'll see guys what it's gonna be like. Like I need to wait for the body. That's kind of my thing. I was actually kind of hoping to maybe even get it out today because I did do some of the, um, I had done the pinion and the motor mount and all that stuff the day before. So that's that uh, Loctite had already settled and all that kind of stuff. So besides from just the bolts holding the actual motor mount on, I probably could have taken it out for a rip today and just seen what it was like. But I didn't have a body and I knew what this thing would end up looking like if I didn't have a body on it. So anyways, guys, that's it. Uh, kind of a quick unboxing, quick overview. Obviously, guys, like everything else, there'll be tons of videos on this buggy. I'm excited to get it running. I'm excited to get the body back. I actually don't really know what's happening with it. I first had mentioned kind of a nice green, and then I was like, ooh, what about a nice orange? And then I was like, you know what? Use orange and maybe do something else with it. So I actually don't have any idea how it's going to come back. So I'm excited, but we will be doing a video as soon as the body gets back. But anyways, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe. Hit the notifications bell, and we'll wait to the next video for picks.